Welcome back to my dark room. Today we're going to talk about optimum aperture for your enlarging lens. Now, before we begin, yes, I shave the beard. I do this every summer uh, and I only have the beard during the winter typically, but since 2020 was kind of the longest emotional year we've had, I kind of kept it the whole time. So uh, this is as naked as I'm gonna get for you guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and nip any weird comments uh, in the bud, okay? All right, so today what we're going to be doing is making a print or a series of prints using different apertures to see how it affects sharpness. So uh, this is kind of just a guide for you to then go and do this for your own lenses because every lens is going to be a little bit different. I am going to be using a Companon S 50mm f2.8 with a 35mm piece of film. This is going to be one of the uh, film comparison negatives. I know you're sick of looking at those. Don't worry, we only have 38 more to go. Uh, but we're going to be looking at Pancro 400 from Berger because it's really the grainiest film that uh, I tested aside from like T-Max 3200 and Ilford 3200. We're also going to be looking at a medium format test negative that um, we'll be using a 100 millimeter Companon S f5.6. So that's going to look uh, a little bit like this if you can kind of see that. Now, uh, this came as a pack of four. I only need one, so if anybody is looking for one of these, I'll put the other three available in my store. The link's down in the description there. So it's gonna be first come, first serve. If you need one, you can pick one of these up, but once they're gone, they're gone. I'm just gonna hold on to the one. All four are the same. Uh, this is not gonna be a test for resolution. This is not gonna be a comparison between different types of lenses, like a, a cheap triplet versus an expensive APO uh, double gauss design or anything like that. This is just to see what happens when you stop down from wide open all the way down uh, to the overall sharpness so that uh, we can see if the manufacturer's recommendation of stop two to three stops from wide open for sharpest really is it. Uh, are we gonna gain anything by stopping down more? Are we just going to lose uh, acceptable printing times, but the sharpness is the same. Do we introduce diffraction? Who knows? So we're going to find out. With the 35 millimeter, I'm going to make four by five slices from the center of an 11 by 14 magnification. So a uh, modestly big print from that small negative. With the medium format test negative, I'm just going to make a straight eight by 10 or eight by eight in this case print, and we'll look at the sharpness there. So. Not huge enlargements, not tiny little things, but kind of more uh, reasonable print sizes from both of those. And we're gonna go ahead and skip the, um, the medley here of me at the enlarger. There's no reason for you to uh, sit through some crappy YouTube music while I've got the lights off. So we're just gonna go ahead and fast forward to the copy stand stage and discuss the actual results. So let's hop on down there and take a look. Here we have our F 2.8. This is the Burger Pancro 400, 50 millimeter Schneider Company on S, wide open. So it looks fairly sharp. There's really nothing here to, uh, to be unhappy with. It's still fairly sharp. The Detail all seems to be there. So on its own, it looks fine. But let's put it next to the F4 and see what it looks like there. All right, here next to the F4, we can see that at first glance, it looks exactly the same. But if we look down at the collar on the highlight side, the left bottom corner, we can see that we are starting to get a little bit sharper detail even though the grain seems just as sharp on the background for both. So we are getting uh, a little bit improvement by stopping down one stop. And here at 5.6, we're getting, I think, very small amount of sharpness gain over the previous, but next to the 2.8, we can see it really is sharpening up on those fine details of the fabric and the collar. 
The grain does seem just a tiny bit sharper. So this would be at the two stop from wide open. Uh, and I think we are seeing a difference. Here's F8. I feel we're getting the exact same result as the previous, but we've had to double our exposure time. F11. F16. Here's our wide open. It, we're gonna have to hope here once I get this into my video software, uh, we don't have too much of an issue with like a Moyer pattern or something like that going on. It is a bit strange looking at it uh, on my monitor because I've got all these little red focus lines going on. Uh, overall, everything here looks pretty sharp. This is 5.6 wide open and it looks pretty good. Um, nothing here saying, you know, screaming that it's out of focus, but we saw the same thing with the previous lens. This is the 100 millimeter Schneider Compton S. Uh, wide open is 5.6. So let's go ahead and look at it side by side with the F8. And looking at this, and looking at F8, what I am seeing is a little bit of sharpening on the letters of the word negative here on the top where it says test negative. Now I did make sure that everything was aligned uh, with the enlarger so we should have equal sharpness in all the corners, but I am seeing a little bit sharper in the top right corner from uh, one aperture to the next. And here at F11, I'm seeing no real difference at all between the previous and this one. Everything seems equal, just twice as long to expose it. And here at F16, again, no difference between this and the previous, just again, twice as long to expose it. Sharpness and the fine detail seems exactly the same. Okay, now here at F22, I am starting to see something and that is the top right corner in this wheel. I am starting to see some blurriness. So the very sharp lines are starting to now get less than sharp lines. I am definitely seeing less sharpness in the circle in the center. Uh, the edges of the high contrast from black to white are starting to blur again. So it's looking a lot more like our wide open. And then the uh, dial in the top right corner, we're definitely seeing some fuzziness. So we are getting diffraction really starting to come in at F32. Although the previous aperture, uh, definitely less noticeable, but it was there. I would say F16, which is where we topped out with the 50 millimeter lens, seems to be about as much as we can get uh, stop down before diffraction starts to be introduced. As we stop further down, diffraction gets worse. Now that we have seen the results, we can see that with the 35 millimeter negative, the lens definitely is soft, wide open. Not surprising, they're not really designed to be used like that. So even though the grain looks sharp through the grain focuser, we're just not quite getting the uh, sharpness in those really fine details. Stopping down even just one stop made a difference, but mostly two to three stops, same sharpness as more, but with a more reasonable printing time. Because every time I had to stop down, I had to double my time. So there at the end, we were looking at over two minutes at F22. Uh, stop down, I was getting somewhere in the 16 second range. So a lot more reasonable. The, uh, there was no other benefit than that. Now, when it comes to the medium format, yes, we were sharper than wide open at 5.6 when we stopped down, but then as we stopped further down, especially in the corners, and this we didn't see with the smaller negative because we didn't print the smaller negative, but we saw in the corners that we started to lose some of our 
sharp detail, and that's because we were starting to get into diffraction. So that's something to consider as well. Now, none of these lenses are really getting stopped down enough for diffraction to be a huge issue, but uh, in the future, I might try to see if I can get a uh, enlarging lens or a copy lens that can go down to f90, and we'll see if we can really make diffraction a problem. That's something for another day. I've got to try to find the, the pieces and parts to do that. So overall, yes, we're getting a um, sharper image stopping two to three stops down, just like the manufacturer recommended. Uh, I've seen that man, uh, recommendation from Schneider, Rodenstock, Minolta, um, who else? Nikkor, uh, all the other brands. They, they all recommend that beyond we're not getting a diffraction issue, but we are just getting really long printing times. So take that for what it's worth. This is not meant to be a definitive result for everybody on every lens. This is showing you how to do this for yourself and what to look for so you can test your lenses and make sure you're getting the best results you can, but still having reasonable printing time. So get in your dark room, make some prints, do some tests, figure it out. It just took me a couple hours and I was completely done. So uh, get out there and do it, right? Find your best optimal aperture and make the sharpest prints you can. All right, we'll see you next time.